Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the channel on what is a cast day in the Bay Area. Now, if you follow me on my channel, you know that I rented a Fiat 500A Barnes on Turo, and you also know that my wife owns a Fiat 500, the, the regular one. And uh, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be doing comparison of the two. Uh, so without further ado, let's check them out and let's start off with cold starts. Let's do that. Right off the bat, you're going to see that the, the overall shape and look is about the same for the two. And I think you really have to kind of dig closely to see those differences. Right now, the, the front bumper, as you can see, the, the A-bar sort of has more of a lip to it. And also, the entire grille is kind of like one piece attached with the fog lights right there in the center or closer to the center. Whereas the regular Fiat 500 uh, doesn't really have much of a, a lip at the bottom and the fog lights are sort of attached to their own separate grills uh, there on the sides uh, closer to the outsides of the car. Uh, we're pretty much your headlights, uh, your daytime running lights and your turn signal uh, is all sort of in this uh, same place as the two. And then of course your signs, uh, you have uh, you have the A-Barth sign, which is a scorpion. And later you have the Fiat sign here on the regular Fiat. Uh, the Fiat sign you won't find anywhere on the A-Barth. Now moving along to the side of the car, uh, really uh, the biggest differences are uh, the side skirts. As you can see on the on the A-bar, the side skirt kind of goes up the panel a little bit more uh, than, than your little Fiat 500 does here. And of course the, the brake calipers, although they're red on this one, they're actually a little bit meatier on this one here. As you can you do have the a bar sign here on the side of the car, uh, which you don't have on uh, the regular Fiat 500. You don't have like a like a 500 or a Fiat sign on the side of this car here. Uh, so that's missing from that. Moving around to the, now on your regular Fiat 500, you have a single exhaust pipe coming out the back and you sort of have like these uh, fake uh, grills here, uh, where it is on the, on the a barth you have sort of like this uh like air outlet uh, and you have the dual exhaust pipes and you have uh, a grill that's actually real a uh, diffuser that's real on this car uh, versus uh, that of the regular fiat 500 and of course you have the a barth sign scorpion on the back uh, versus having just the fiat sign over here on the back of this one let's go inside So, climbing inside, this is the, the regular Fiat 500. And um, you'll see in the other one, and I'll throw clips on as I go along, but the steering wheel on this one is your, your typical brown steering wheel. And you got your Fiat sign right here in the middle. Uh, your gauges, uh, you have your typical gauges here. And you're missing the turbo gauge, which would come with the A-Barth. Um, so yeah, the A-Barth has more of a square. Uh, bottom to the steering wheel and of course that turbo there 
uh, but pretty much the stereo and the layout of your center console is pretty much the same you don't have the leather up here which you do have on the a barth you do have leather on the a barth not on the regular fiat 500 and um also the the shift knob on this one you got kind of like this uh disco ball chrome um shifter here whereas on the a barth you have uh, leather padded with the red stitching uh the red stitching is a theme with the a barth uh which you'll see and then um yeah all this is actually the same uh the sport mode on this one in my opinion doesn't work <laughs> i mean it does work but it doesn't work as well as the sport mode uh does on the a barth um uh, but yeah the panels on the fiats even on the a barth you pretty much they pretty much match the exterior color so uh this is a silver the uh the fiat 500 is a silver uh the a barth is a uh like a like charcoal gray and and so is the exterior it's a charcoal gray as well uh moving around here this is this is mostly leather um whereas the center i want to say is some sort of um not a cloth but something uh, a little bit more sporty uh, but not a leather and and whereas the a barth is an uh, entirely done in leather uh, along with uh, some red stitching and also some red pull tabs uh, which this one doesn't have any pull tabs at all and the, the seats continue to be the same back there one that we have ourselves actually has a bose stereo system whereas the uh, a barth doesn't have a bose stereo system and i think that was an option uh, that the a barth didn't come with uh, pedals you got your typical regular uh, rubbery pedals for this uh, whereas the a barth comes with the sportier metal uh, pedals and also and i don't know if it's an option or whatever but this comes the fiat 500 comes with a sunroof uh which you never ever get full darkness with because it's a screen uh whereas the a barth is completely uh a, a complete hardtop no sunroof on that one let's go check out the a barth now All right, now as you can see, this is that squared out or flat bottom uh, that I was talking about inside the regular Fiat 500. And then here's your turbo gauge, uh, which also tells you when to shift up when you're not in sport mode. Uh, and I think it does that for efficiency so that you shift you know, when you're supposed to or when it thinks you should. Uh, here goes that leather uh, patent top or la leather top with the red stitching. And again, the basic stereo, same setup with the sport mode and all that. And then uh, all pretty much the same. You got the red stitching on here and the red stitching throughout. And these uh, red tabs over here, uh, which the, whoops, which don't exist in the regular Fiat. Again, here goes the color match. No sunroof at all, just completely hard top. And um, yeah, oh, those are some nice mats. I never noticed those last time, but they have the Scorpion there as well. And there's those um, metal pedals uh, that I was talking about in the regular Fiat 500. Like I mentioned in the first impressions video that I did with the A Barth, uh, the other differences are in the engine. It's uh, basically 60 horsepower more than your regular Fiat 500. And if you compare that to other cars that have different versions or upgraded versions of themselves, um, uh, good point is my my Boxster S. Compared to the Boxster and the uh, Boxster S, uh, the percentage wise, the difference of horsepower compared to like your, your A Barth and your Fiat 500, uh, the percentage is much uh, greater. Uh, so you do feel that uh, extra power especially when you have it in sport mode and you really push it once that turbo kicks in uh, the a barth really really feels like a little bit more opened up and and a lot of fun uh, and again like i mentioned in my first impression video i think the suspension is where i would change and and to make this uh, car a little bit more sportier but other than that it's actually a really fun car to drive uh, as far as looks and all that it's you know it's not big differences that you get from the two cars and um but it's the feel and the sound i mean you heard that exhaust the exhaust sound the exhaust note on on this car is a lot greater uh, than the exhaust sound in the regular fiat 500 but uh yeah i think that's pretty much it um 
but yeah please watch my first impressions video and also watch my uh my tour of the fiat abarth and i'd probably go through some of the same things that you saw today but today was more to just kind of like show you both cars at the same time and show you the differences the little differences as far as the interior and the exterior and um uh yeah if you have any questions uh please comment uh down below and if you haven't already done so please subscribe and also uh, share the video with anyone you think might like this type of content or maybe interested in buying one or the other um yeah the price the prices i forgot to mention that before we go the price differences uh, my wife picked up that regular fiat 500 for five thousand dollars and under a hundred thousand miles uh, this one's also under a hundred thousand miles and i believe you could find one easily under ten thousand dollars so you're looking at anywhere between those two prices the five grand and the eight and the ten grand uh for for the abarth so uh if if the differences that you've seen today are not deal breakers and you just want to save some money go with the regular fiat 500 but if you're thinking no i want uh, something sportier and something that i can fix up and uh later on um be completely happy with long term uh spend that extra little bit of money it's not going to break the bank i think uh for the abarth so uh yeah thanks again for watching and i'll talk to y'all later <laughs>